and Funnier versus Ginger Bear. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to GameStar TV 2. We are live once again with WSL League Legends Action. It is the final game that we'll be broadcasting of the regular season, season 2, before the final series. It's going to be Cooler and Funnier versus Ginger Beer. My name is Crisis, and I'm pretty stoked to be here tonight. It's going to be a fantastic game. Really pleased to see the impact that the World Championship is going to be having on tonight's matches because there has been some awesome games to watch on Worlds and of course I had to have a bit of a nap this afternoon earlier this evening because I stayed up to watch some of the Worlds last night and I am getting old and I needed my nana nap. So nevertheless, uh, yeah, we hope to see some of the, the elite strategies that have been deployed at Worlds or displayed at Worlds uh, distilled into our own scene here locally um, in the Wellington Secondary School League Championship. So, Cooler and Funnier versus Ginger Beer. Let's just talk about the schools. Uh, of course, Cooler and Funnier are representing Newlands College. So they're from Newlands College. And they're going to be going up against St. Patrick's College, Ginger Beer. And we actually covered Ginger Beer in our last broadcast, and I can't recall exactly... Who won there? Maybe somebody in the Twitch chat can tell me who won. Now, I was saying at the beginning of the broadcast that this is a big match because if Ginger Beer win, this is their one chance to get into the top eight. And if they win, not only will they get into the top eight, but they'll be kicking Chogath, WC Chogath out. So Cooler and Funnier... <laughs> are safe, no matter what, because they'll pick up a point tonight, and that point will give them 13 points in total um, in the league table. Ginger Beer, if they win tonight, they'll get 3 points, and that'll also put them at 13, um, 13 points in the league table. And unfortunately, Chogath is sitting on 12 points. Now, that said, the thing is, is that Chogath, I think, does, hasn't actually played a match this week. So it's quite possible that Chogath will win their match and go up and have five points over there. But if they're a no-show, then they'll be sitting on 12 points. Now, if they show up, that will mean that we'll have three teams at position 7, 8, and 9 sitting on 13 points each. So if Chogath loses, that is, if they show up and lose, they'll have 13 points as well. So there's all sorts of mathematical possibilities that could result out of tonight's match. And it all begins with Ginger Beer winning. So let's head on over into the Champion Select and let's have a look at how things work out. So I... I I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure Cooler and Funny are on the left-hand side. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so we've got Seawood NZ. Nick... Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember Cooler and Funnier because they've got Nick Lick de Poopy, Aaron Strazer, Daijin, and De Curio. And, of course, I, there, there was... I, I think my co-caster refused to say Nick Lick de Poopy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bizarre name. I mean, why would you call yourself that? <laughs> so that's Cooler and Funnier on the left-hand side. Ginger Beer is Rewove, Dangervert, Vagor, Tyson Pike, and Alzin Jajigro. And I remember that name as well from the last time I cast it. It was just too difficult to say all night long. So I'm just going to call him Al. You can call me Benny, and Benny, if you call me, you can call me Al. To quote the famous. So the bands have gone out. We've got Mugana, Jackson, Nassus, band out. Tristana, Yasuo, and Kazix, band out. So Tristana, I expect, is a band that people have picked up from, from Worlds. Basically, if Tristana is available, you pick her. And if you pick her, you tend to win. Um, as long as you can get to the late game. Of course, Jackson, Nassus, similar sort of 
uh, champions, late game champions. Uh, Nasus, if 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 Susan had been picked, then we would have been guaranteed to have a long game because that's what you do with a Nasus is you just delay the game out, you stack his Q until he two shots turrets, and then you just finish the game from there. Yasuo targeted ban against the mid laner from Cooler and Funnier. I'm pretty certain. I uh, don't want to see the power of Yasuo in there. And in fact, no combo um, created. Uh, no team combo, I guess, knocking Yasuo out. So the first pick that's gone down is Seawood's NZ. And I believe in the only other game that we've covered, Cooler and Funnier, he also picked. Um, the Sharko. So, Sharko, known as the champion that you play when you don't want anybody else to have fun. So, shout out to Seawood NZ for picking the Sharko. Uh, the reason why, you might ask, is because uh, Sharko's there just to make people's lives miserable. And he's got to be really selfish. He doesn't like to give buffs away because he really needs the buffs to be effective. So, yeah. Nick Lick to Poopy. Uh, hovered over the Fizz. He might actually fiddle around a little bit. So I'll, I, before I even talk about that, let's look at the bottom lane. Dangavert uh, sitting on the Janna and Rewove with the Lucian. And Janna has really seen a revitalization, a resurge and a reappearance more than anything else uh, thanks to the World Championship. It is Janna is definitely the support to pick. And it's, it's weird to me that like, it's not just one team that's playing uh, Janna. There's, like, every single match just about has a Janna. And she's got an incredibly high win percentage. Uh, I can't remember what it was. It was like 75% or something crazy like that. Um, so much utility. And yet for the entire season of LCS, Janna hasn't been around. So I'll rotate between saying Janna and Janna. I think it's Janna because that's how I say But whenever I listen to the Americans talking about it, it's Janna. But I... You know, it's got an A. It, there's no R in Janna. And in fact, nobody says, well, I suppose people do say Anna. If you, yeah. Anyway, nevertheless. So uh, we don't have a bottom lane uh, completely picked out just yet for Cooler and Fania, but they've picked up the Brom. And yeah, I guess Brom's uh, a, a good, strong, safe pick. I would say, as a support. Uh, so we're going to expect to see some lane bullying coming out, and I don't really know how that's going to work out, because Janna is kind of a counter pick to lane bullying, because uh, firstly, she's got that range to rest, but secondly, she's got the Howling Gale. Uh, easy, easy disengage. And, um, and the shield. The shield is just there to make sure that uh, any damage that you do actually get down is negated. Um, not necessarily completely, so we'll just see. Tyson Pike uh, sitting on the volley bear over there. So we don't know whether Tyson Pike is actually the jungler. Let's just put the summoner's blackout on. Sorry about that. Make him go away. Uh, but the volley bear in the jungle is a fun jungle. He's got interesting gank potential, but he can get kited. So he's got to really get his, uh, his Q timing. Uh, what is it? Thundering charge or something like that. Um, He's got to get his Q timing down pat because it actually has a very short period where he's got that move speed bonus. So he kind of has to almost, you know, you can't run out of a brush with it. You've got to walk out of the brush, kind of do that waddling thing, smack your hands together, and then hit the Q, drop to all fours, run and get the toss. Um, so we'll see if he's going to be able to get his timing right, whoever it is that has um, the old volley bear. So Twitch is going to be combining with Braum down there in the bottom lane. And I will absolutely jizz in my pants if Al goes with a gangplank. But he's not going to. Just play the gangplank, man. Is what I say. So DeCurio is sitting on Rise. Rise a very, very strong and safe pick as well for the top lane. And interesting that they banned out the Susan, uh, cooler and funnier, because Rise is actually a bit of a counterpick to the Susan. Although I suppose eventually Rise is unable to 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 deal with Susan. So the early game is Rise's in in Rise's favour because he can Q harass, but 
Um, unfortunately, Susan eventually starts being in a position to ignore him. So unless you camp the lane and put Susan really, really far back early on and get Rise really, really far ahead, uh, there's there's not really much. So I suppose I, I've kind of talked myself out of not understanding why they banned Susan if they were going to pick Rise. So we've got some switches going on. Aaron Strauss is going to be playing um, Oriana. Uh, again, a safe pick uh, for the mid lane. Maybe Nick Lick de Poopy is going to be playing the Oriana. Who knows? Uh, we'll have to wait until Champ Select is <laughs> over before they stop <laughs> trolling me. So let's, uh, while we're just waiting for that to happen, I'll just point out that at the top of the table is Team Volker from Wellington College, followed by Super Kawaii, also from Wellington College. And they are safe, I think. I don't think anybody's going to be able to knock them out from the number one and two spots. So big shout out to Team Volker and Super Kawaii. Oh, so Kit Fox is around. Maybe he can cast with me. Let me just see if I can do that. Doo -doo -doo. All right, let me head back into Champ Select very quickly. So there's a possibility that Kit Fox might join me, but he'll have to use OPGG to try and spectate somebody that's playing. Um, so we've got Syndra versus Oriana in the mid lane. Vagor is going to be going up against Daijin, and there you go. Thanks for swapping things around a lot, guys. Uh, shout out to Cooler and Funnier. Who were Cooler and Funnier? Well, they were trying to be Cooler and Funnier. I'm just going to say that. You were trying, but you weren't funny. We're just upsetting. Uh, <laughs> so Daijin's going to be going up against Vagor, who is going to be um, playing the Syndra. So I don't know. They're kind of both lane bullies, more or less. So they kind of deserve each other, is all I'm going to say. Let's just see what Kit Fox says. All right, he can't cast because he's with his missus, which is fair enough, I suppose. And in the top lane, uh, we're going to have Al with Jace going up against Aaron Straza uh, in with the rise. So, I mean, if you're a good Jace player, you're going to at least be able to deal with the rise. Um, I would say Jace probably has a, a stronger earlier game. As soon as he's got two points, uh, he can start really doing amazing poke, uh, just firing the shock blast through his uh, acceleration gate. So we'll see if that's the way that he goes putting a point into each of those skills to deal with Aaron um, on the rise. Interestingly enough, he's going for that early domination. He wants to pick up a kill, and you know that because I'm going to reveal the summoners right now, and you'll see that he has picked up, uh, instead of TP that the rise has, he, um, L is taking Ignite instead. So he's going to be looking for getting some early kills, getting the kills. In fact, look at that, three Ignites on the side of Ginger Beer. I'm not really sure why. I mean, okay, yeah, it's super aggressive. That's, that's all well and good. But it's not as though their opponents have much in the way of sustain at all. So, yeah. Just really, really aggressive. I guess they favor Ignite in Wellington. Needs to have the fires, because it's cold. Apparently it's really cold in Wellington today, so shout out to everybody huddled over their keyboards. Uh, hopefully you've got the heater on, or at the very least the heat pump going in the house. Going to head into the skin battle, and we'll see if... So what we generally find, ladies and gentlemen, when we cover a series, is eventually teams realize that we actually count the number of skins, and we say how many there are, and uh, teams start to cotton onto things and particularly pick, uh, make sure that four of their champions have skins for comedic value. But we haven't seen a lot of that uh, in the WSL. Everybody's very clean, which is pretty cool. Okay, so down across the bottom we've got three skins. Justicar Syndra, Frost Queen Janna, and Debonair Jace. 
who is looking mighty debonair. And across the top, we have so far no skins. I'm not particularly pleased there. Poor showing, but maybe a reflection of our demographic here tonight. Let's check that my recording is going okay. Yeah. So the skin battle goes to Gingerbeer. Without doubt. Well done to Gingerbeer. Now the question is going to be, like, so I don't actually know how these teams face up against each other, other than they are at the same position in the table, just about. So I think Cooler and Funny have one more win than Gingerbeer. One, two, three. They've lost three. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Ginger Beer's lost four. Cooler and Funny have lost three. So, we got to say that going into this, Cooler and Funny are the favourites. Just in terms of where they are. Uh, shout out to Jay Wise, who says Volker sucks anyway, even though they're at the top of the table. <laughs> uh, X and Nova, I think the MVP sh gets a prize. Yes, so we will be picking an MVP, and each week I've told Ruby who the MVP is, and uh, she has awarded a prize, as far as I know. So, oh, I should do some tweets, just so people know that we're on. Do, 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 do. There you go. You should be following us on Twitter, at Gamestar. And if you aren't, you should go there now, and you should follow us, because that's where all the cool kids hang out. And that's where the t tweeting uh, happens. I do the tweeting there. And... And you should follow us on Facebook as well. So we've been posting on your Facebook page, the WSL Facebook page. Give us a like on Facebook. We are facebook.com forward slash GameStar. Yeah. And who's the slow bob tonight? Dangovert. We're waiting for Dangovert to load up. And when Dangovert loads up, Oh no, in fact, Nick Lick is in fact the slower Bob. Although he's loading pretty quickly, so I guess he might have had a crash or something like that. Which is something that happens to me often. So yeah, there you go, he's loaded in. So no skins at all through the top. What is this? Cooler and funnier? Anyway. So we'll be on to the rift in just a moment. Ginger Beer versus Cooler and Funnier. Ginger Beer must win this for a chance to make it into the playoffs next week, which we will be bringing to you um, on Saturday and on Sunday. Very, very exciting. Nice to have been with the WSL for the whole of the second season. Because we came into the first season kind of uh, partway through. I think it was like... In fact, it was right near the end of the season, and we got to cover just the finals day, and that was really it. Um, and very pleased that we were able to come back and support you guys during season two, guys and girls, during season two. And very excited about tonight's match, although it doesn't sound like it, because this is like the longest loading screen in the history of loading screens. Never mind. Never mind. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I really had nothing to say there while we were waiting for this loading screen to finally finish. How oh, very, very exciting. So, Cooler and Funnier are the blue team, the red team are Ginger Beer, and it'll probably take a moment before they start buying their, um, their, their items because they probably all went and made a cup of coffee while <laughs> the screen was loading. Because <laughs> oh my goodness me, it was taking forever. Never mind. Yeah, I wasn't joking. Look how long they took to wake up. There you go.
A summoner has disconnected. You're kidding me. A summoner has disconnected. Oh, you're joking. Why didn't send, somebody send me a message? Okay, so I'm just going to see. So we've got a pause that's gone down. I'm just going to see uh, what's going on here from Ruby. Do, 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 do. Alright, just got a message from Ruby and we are actually going to be loading. So really sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to have to exit this game and we'll be bringing you the game in just a moment as soon as they've done a remake. Alrighty. Skip waiting for the stats. That's alright, Death Chinks. These things happen. There it is. Spectate. Alright. So hopefully we'll be able to fly through this nice and quickly. And yeah, I had no idea that we are actually 30 minutes after the start of the game. So that's in that's pretty incredible. Um, so we're just waiting for... The lobby's been remade. I'm in the lobby. Just letting the... Uh, I think it was Team Volca that wanted me to cast another game. And... Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Not going to be able to... Uh, not going to be able to cast the game. Uh, th that second game. So we'll be covering Cooler and Funnier as soon as they remake and we get back into the Rift. Um, unfortunately, we won't be covering uh, the other match that was going to be happening tonight, which um, which Poon was quite keen uh, that I cast. It was going to be Volker versus Hut Valley. Yeah, so. We'll wait until... Everybody's in. We're just waiting for one player from Ginger Beer. And it's not Al. It's not Dangerbert. It's not Vago. It's not Rewove. It's Tyson Pike. And Tyson Pike has just joined. So that's pretty cool. And we're into Champ Select. It's Tournament Draft. They're just going to ban. Do quick search. Fly through the bands. So if you've just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we had to remake the lobby because, uh, unfortunately, they didn't do the swaps that they were supposed to do. This is cooler and funnier, and so they loaded into the rift, and like Twitch had DC'd, so he couldn't actually swap back. <laughs> Who was it? I think it, I I yeah I don't know I think it was Jacurio, um had DC so he couldn't swap his champion back, and so they're just remaking so the bands uh, we're flying through it there's there's no actual selection going on they're just going to mirror exactly the team composition that they had picked a, picked before, and then we'll be into the rift and onto the game. Boop -a -loop -a -loop. So thanks for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, slight technical difficulties, a little bit beyond our control, but we will be on. I'm surprised nobody picked up Azir. Yeah, because it would have been fun to see Azir. But I suppose there's too much riding on this game, isn't there? There really is too much riding on this game. Ginger Beer would never have picked Azir, I think, unless, you know, their top laner... Well, I'm just assuming Azir is a top laner, but maybe not. Um, unless their top laner or their mid laner had been playing Azir permanently um, since Azir was launched. Come on, Tyson Pike. It was Volley Bear. That's who you need to pick. I'm not really sure why this has been thought about, but anyway, 
Maybe Tyson Pike is considering. The value of Volibear, truly. And whether he can select it in the last second of... Oh, we're going to have to remake again. Yes. Yeah, I think we're going to have to remake again. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm just going to see what's going to happen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, we're not pissed. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> uh, no, I'm amused. I don't get angry, I get amused. I only get angry when I climb. Because then I can get angry with myself. It's not nice to be angry with other people. So I don't get angry with other people. I sometimes get frustrated. But I try not to let that affect the relationships that I have with people. Okay. So, um, yes, Vago, <laughs> you are on stream. <laughs> no, that's all right. Shout out to everyone who's apologizing. They'll all be very polite. It's quite okay. Um, I actually think, though, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to stop the recording. And I will start in just a moment. So, if, if, you, um, if you're confused, like... Prepare your ears, because I'm going to play this intro again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because, so, so what happens with the way that the, the whole technical way things work is that the YouTube upload is direct from the stream. Um, so you can use Twitch's controls to select a highlight and just play just that part. Um, but I make a recording locally in HD quality, um, for uploading to GameStar.com. So, um, you know, I like to have a, a decent a decent package, like, put together without shenanigans for <laughs> when I do the upload later, but never, li never mind. Okay, let's go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to GameStar TV 2. Even though you haven't actually left us at all, but that intro is for the recording later on. We're bringing you, this is third time's the charm, hopefully, Cooler and Funnier versus Ginger Beer. We're into Champ Select again. So we had Champ Select. It went through picks and ban phase. Happy days. Everybody was all quite comfortable. And then Cooler and Funnier decided that they were going to have some shenanigans, swap around their champions, and not actually uh, take into account the fact that their Twitch player um, has a bad computer and got disconnected and couldn't swap or something like that. I don't know whether it was the Twitch player or the player who actually had Twitch at the time, but they swapped around a couple of times. It was all, you know, fun and games, and then somebody got poked in the eye, and their computer crashed. Uh, they got DC'd, and they couldn't rejoin, and so we loaded into the Rift, and they all DC'd again. We remade, and... Uh, then Tyson Pike joined and forgot to actual champion. So we had nine picks go through. All of the bands go through. And then Tyson Pike uh, got a random pick. And he ended up with Soraka. And, you know, Soraka Jungle. Well, not only... I mean, Soraka Jungle is barely viable. You can actually jungle um, with Soraka. But nevertheless, it was supposed to be same picks and bands as before, so he needed to have the volley bear. So let's just run through the teams while we are into these last few seconds. I see nobody swapping things around and that's very good. And in fact, oh, uh, no. 
the teams are not in the order that their um, that, that their lane matchups are going to be. So I was going to get all excited about that. So let's just run through Kula and Funnier first up, and Kula and Funnier, of course, are, are from are from Newlands College in Wellington. Seawoods, uh, Seawood NZ, Nick Lick de Poopy, Aaron Straza, Dijon and Decurio will be representing their school tonight. And on the red team, we're going to have Ginger Beer, and they are represented by Rewove, Dangovert, Vagor, Tyson Pike, and Alzin Jajigro, who will from here on be known as Al. Because a f six, one, two, three, four, five. A five syllable name is no caster's friend. So the players were all very polite and saying sorry that we were remaking all of that sort of thing. I don't mind. I'm just quite happy that uh, by 22 9 tonight, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be watching a little bit of Summoner's Rift. And these two teams duke it out uh, for what is potentially the final spot. Well, it is the final spot in the top eight, and a place in the playoffs next week that we will be bringing to you. So, that'll be cool. Shout out to everybody who's had the patience to stick around for 40 minutes <laughs> while we get this broadcast going, and um, while you've listened to me. Fill the air. Talk about birds in the field. It's your cricket commentators fall back. Birds in the fields. So I think the danger here that we have for ginger beer is well I suppose what they've got is a poke comp more than anything else. So they've got one source of initiation really and that's Tyson Pike. Well technically there's two sources of initiation. Dangovert when his flash is up could flash in get the monsoon and kind of uh, push somebody from uh, Cooler and Funnier back into his team. But, you know, that really puts him into a, a grave amount of danger, uh, play, doing, pulling a move like that. So that's not really much of an initiation. Tyson Pike is the only other source of real initiation uh, with his Q as he rumbles through um, on the volley bear. And it is actually really easy to kite that skill. It's very, very easy to, to kite that skill. You know, all you need to do is have uh, a rune prison. And boom, Tyson Pike is stopped in his tracks. Because even though rune prison is a really short duration skill, it's long enough to prevent the volley bear from actually closing the distance using his Q. So it's going to be really difficult for them to initiate a fight. So they are going to be depending on sieging, a defending sieging, uh, sieges and mounting sieges in order to win this game. So uh, they'll have to have their minion management really good, lane management really, really good um, in order to uh, set up sieges. Now the thing that's going to make it difficult for them to be sieging is the wave clear of their opponents. So Oriana is famous, famously good at wave clear. And heading into the skin battle again. Yeah, so Oriana, great at clearing waves. Going to have the Twitch there as well. Also very good. Just throw a casket of poison there um, and expunge. And Bob's your uncle. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see where the action comes from um, in this team. Because, of course, again, uh, cooler and funnier, sitting with a jungler, Shako, who doesn't actually have much of a teamfight presence at, at all. So what you... Wh I, I expect he's going he's gonna to be hoping to um, get some picks. And while he's getting those picks, possibly setting up flank flanking maneuvers with Rai split pushing up uh, at the top. Uh, the other potential for picking uh, is that old Whistler Village twitch there, Daijin, is... Oh, he's actually got a skin. Sorry, just take a moment to recognize that Daijin actually has a skin. And that'll explain... So, I think Decuria had the Twitch and didn't have a skin for Twitch. And Daijin was the one that was going to play Twitch and actually has the skin. So, uh, nice. One skin still doesn't beat three, though. Uh, so, yeah, so Daijin uh, gets himself uh, stealthed, follows Shako into the jungle, and does a little bit of an assassination. In fact, they could they could assassinate in lanes as well. So um, we've essentially got a poke comp versus a pick comp here. And let's see how things work out. 
In terms of the effectiveness of Ariana, of course, you can put the ball onto the Twitch. Um, as I don't, I don't think it makes him visible. It wouldn't make him visible. So I think you can de the the ball can be delivered. Um, and then uh, the 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 suboptimal ball delivery is Shaka. So Shaka can um, he can deceive in uh, with the ball on his head and set up for the Ariana. Um, shockwave, but that's not really advisable because Shaka's actually really um, squishy. He wants to get in and get out, out, and so if he's used deceive to deliver the ball, uh, the ball uh, then is used to shockwave champions on top of him. He's going to get melted. So I expect that's not what's going to happen. I don't think that he's going to be the ball delivery mechanism tonight. Um, and if he is, uh, then he has bigger balls than me. C Woods NZ. I've got to say. Balls of steel, no doubt. So who are we waiting? Last time we were waiting for Tyson... P was it Dangovert? I think it was Tyson Pike that we were waiting for. There you go, Dangovert. Loads in. We're into the rift, ladies and gentlemen. It is the WSL. My name is Crisis. I'm not actually join joined by Coldblood. I'm not sure what's happened to Coldblood tonight. Um, but it is all about Cooler and Funnier versus Ginger Beer tonight. Here on GameStar TV 2. And check out that weird time. It says 16 minutes. <laughs> that is bizarre. Why does it say 16 minutes? Yeah, I'm not going to hit that button over there. That's just too weird. Alright. Well, uh, so we'll just put director cam on. And we'll sort out the order of the lanes. And this is one thing I can't do while talking. So. <laughs> Welcome to Summer's Rift. I'm um, just a little bit dense in that regard. There you go. So we have a defensive opening gambit, really, from Cooler and Funnier, just spreading out and warding all of the entrances to their jungles. Pretty much the same sort of thing going on from Ginger Beer. And the volleyball volley bear is going to be starting with a little dance at the blue buff. And I see where it's in Z um, on the Shaco starting at the usual red buff. So often when you see a Shaco um, on the fields of justice you will have an invade from the uh, enemy team and they go in for the invade just to pop the boxes you're not interested in getting any kills all you want to do is pop the boxes that are getting popped up because the boxes is what makes Shaco able to do his um, to do his jungle clear in the way that he can and if you can pop these boxes if you can just head on over there and get them popped uh, it sets him so far behind. He's he really needs to get these uh, get these boxes down to get his clear, and um, and yeah, you can set him way way behind if you are able to pop them. I think I said that three times, possibly. <laughs> oh, he walked away for a moment there. Thought he didn't uh, need to. There you go. So. Blue buff to, for Tyson Pike, and interesting skill that he started off with there. Did he put he put a point in his W? Is that what you start with with jungle volley boy volley bear, and not with a not with a, a point in E? Is a uh, majestic roll? What's it? Rolling thunder. That's what. I knew there was thunder in the Q's Q's name. Alright, so in the bottom lane we've got Revove and Dangavert going up against Daijin and Decurio. And already Daijin uh, taking a little bit of damage from the bully uh, that Revove is going to be with that shield, the Jaina shield. So the Jaina shield gives you effectively a BF sword's worth of um, AD. Uh, up in the top lane, Al's in Al uh, going up against Aaron. And uh, they're just really exchanging. So there you go, I told you. Two points. First two points uh, into Shockwave and, uh, sh sorry, Shock Blast and um, Acceleration Gate, and he'll start getting all sorts of harass down. So Aaron is expecting, uh, well, 
there's not going to be much of a gank. He wouldn't have eyes on where the volleyball sta uh, volley bear started, so doesn't really know where that's going to be coming from. Uh, Seawards uh, NZ will probably go for an invade now, so he's going to head on up, either go for a gank, and in fact, there you go, his signal, he's going to go in for a gank. So Aaron Straza has his rune prison on cooldown, and in fact, there it goes, it's perfect timing, uh, baits him in, he's going to die though from the ignite, so first blood, uh, goes to the rise, onto the Jace. Jace gets the reply kill, and of course the assist to C. Wood NZ, who has now shown himself in the top lane, so everybody else can kind of breathe a sigh of relief. Okay, we know exactly where Shaco is. Uh, we don't know where the Volley Bear is, and I think Volley Bear is probably going to be rushing um, his, uh, his Madrids, his, the, the Razors. So Feral Flare. He's going to be building a Feral Flare. So he's going to stick in the jungle for quite some time and not really have much of a presence. Although I think he, he, he can gank at level, if he puts a point in Q, we know that he's going to be looking for ganks um, after he picks up level 4. So Syndra pushed out of lane, picks up a second Doran's ring, uh, wants to go back in and try and deal with the Orianna, who... Must have been pushed back to lane herself, because has come back with um, some magic resist. So interesting, uh, kind of different approaches there. Syndra wanting to go in for more damage, whereas uh, Nicklick on Orianna looking. Oh, there's another gank going on up here. Uh, Aaron uh, this time survives though. So um, Aaron versus um, Al turns out to be Aaron coming out on top there. Two ganks from Seawoods and Zed setting up camp here in the top lane and making sure that Ryze doesn't have a poor early game against the Jace. It's really the right thing to do because I think Jace would have been stronger uh, in this early game against, uh, against the Ryze. Uh, remove, uh, sorry, Rewove, uh, getting some damage, good damage down onto Daijin, not really taking much damage himself in return. So things going as expected down here in the bottom lane as well, I would say. So t Tyson Pike demonstrating his... Oh no, he's go starting off with a quill coat. So there's interesting. I don't... Yeah, I suppose quill coats, very, very unique pick for junglers uh, these days. Not a lot of junglers really benefit from the quill coat. And really what it's saying is he's going to be going tanky volley bear, which I suppose is really the way that you want to go with a volley bear. You don't really... So if you watch Trick 2G, I think on his volley bear he builds the, f uh, the feral flare and everything else tank. Uh, stun goes down onto Nicklek, nicely done. Vagor gets some good damage down onto him uh, with no reply really, but of course what we do know is that there is a Shako about, so he's going to be looking around, checking that there's no wards, um, and looking to come in and try and turn the... F uh, the fl oh, the fortunes of Nicklick. Is it going to be enough time? Nicklick uh, flashes away, and in comes Seawood and Zed. Uh, Vagor is running for his life at the moment. He's going to use his flash to get away. And that's an effective gank, uh, you, you've got to say. Al is just not worried. He is just pushing up all the way. So it's an effective gank because he got the flash. And unfortunately, Vagor did not leave, and uh, eats an ignite and a knife to the back. A shiv, I think it is. A shiv to the back. Yeah. So it's 3-1 at the 7 minute mark in favor of Cooler and Funnier. Really the hope of, uh, of, the, of the lanes at the moment is the bottom lane. We've got 52 CS uh, on the Lucian in comparison to 37 on the Twitch. So, in terms of lanes, a bottom lane is winning. That said, the only reason mid lane is even is because of the gank that has gone down. So, that, that gank from Shaka from Seawoods, has really just set, uh, set, given Oriana an opportunity to get back into the game, uh, more than anything else. Oh, Jace taking a lot of trial, um, a lot of punishment, and that's because of those two items. Um, those are the first two, uh, like, they're not, ma I, I want to call them major, like typically you'd refer to a major item as you know something that's been completed, but those are the first two recipe components that you really want to uh, pick up to get your initial power spikes on a rise, um, is the catalyst and the tier. So the tier to start stacking mana, 
um, and the catalyst uh, to get a nice big mana boost. So that ward will have spotted Seawood's uh, Seawood NZ. Nice, uh, nice warding there from Dagavert. Well done, well done, Trip. Tyson Pike, meanwhile, still in the jungle and just farming away. So he has got a point in Q, but he's maxing his W. He's gotten to level six, and who knows when he's going to gank? Because I don't. I would have thought he might have tried for a gank at level four, uh, but he's decided against that. First pink ward of the day goes on to the field of justice. And a bit of an unconventional position is usually the pink gets put over there. Um, but nevertheless, it's a defensive pink ward from the blue team more than anything else. And I guess it's it means that things might be a little bit safer. Some aggression going on down in the bottom lane as we talk about this pink ward. It's slightly safer over there. You know, everybody pinks, puts a pink ward there these days. So the chances of it getting taken down um, are much higher. We've got lots and lots of stacking going on down in the bottom lane. So nice move from Cooler and Funnier. They really, um, they've recognized that the bottom lane is the problem. And they've tried to do a show of force um, in the bottom lane. It's no matter that they didn't actually achieve uh, anything there because what they've been able to do is take the first dragon and rise straight away teleporting to the top and well he's not going to miss any experience from this wave um, but he will miss some of the actual gold so nice little move over there Al heads on down walks through that brush doesn't check that one so he's going to hang about and we might actually see a counter gang coming in Oh, the stun from Vagor misses, unfortunately for him. So that would have worked out. That was a nice shock wave, uh, shock blast um, through the acceleration gate. But unfortunately, the stun from Syndra just off target. And that means that, well, we didn't see as much action as we could have because we might have seen a counter gang coming in there um, from Seawoods. He was perfectly positioned to do that. So Al, uh, coming second best in that exchange, as you can see, so Aaron uh, doing very, very well. He's quite close to picking up his ROA. How much gold does he have in the bank? He needs 740 to complete it. So he's real close. I guess he might actually just stick around. And anything that he does stick around for um, is a bonus. Loses a cannon minion over there. Goes in on Al and picks up the kill thanks to Seawoods coming through as well. Sorry, Seawoods. Um, picks up the kill. So this is really a very, very big worry for Ginger Beer. They are five and one down. Shaco has done exactly what Shaco needs to do. He's put his top lane well um, in the lead. He's visited the mid lane um, and set things even there. Oh, and is now ganking uh, in the jungle. Forces the flash out of Tyson Pike. He decided to go in and decided actually no, I'm not going to be able to do that. Vigo trying to pick up that Wraith and unable to do so. So Aaron Strazer will finish his Rod of Ages. Down in the bottom lane, things still not looking great for Daijin and Decurio, but it's okay. It's just that's it's just the one lane um, that uh, that is suffering. They're not really that far behind. I mean, yeah, it's 30 CS. Uh, well, I suppose that is <laughs> that is pretty far behind. Uh, then again. Uh, Decurio with no items besides um, his relic shield. So is that the upgraded item? I think it's uh, the second tier item. Yeah, it's got to be the second tier item. Because he spent gold. Although he might have been just spending it on wards or anything else. Decides uh, to not go back. And Rewove pushes the lane up and heads on back. He's going to do his own buying himself. And what is he going to... Is he going to rush his blade? Jace uh, takes a bit of damage. BF sword. So I guess he is rushing the Bloodthirster first up. Oh, Tyson Pike will have seen that. So if he knows what's good for him, he'll pop that box. Or will he? Yeah. Nicely done. So he's... Well, he better... Is there going to be a smite park battle? There might actually be. He got it just in time, even though he smoked too early. Uh, but the shockwave's going to take him down, and Seawood's in the NZ 
is right there. Now, the question is, will Rewo be able to get a reply kill? There's no shockwave, um, so he's not too worried about that. In fact, there's no mana on Nicklick either. Vago uh, rotating down as well, and, uh, well, they'll get away... Oh, oh, the stun goes down onto Nicklick, but he gets the flash out and uh, survives to fight another day. Um, that is, uh, meanwhile, in the top lane. Let's just hit the backspace and see what happened with poor old Jace. Oh, man, we've got to hit the backspace twice. Underneath the turret, he gets taken down. That's what happens. So, poor old Jace uh, gets taken out um, underneath the turret. This rise is just too far ahead now. Going to kill his first turret as well. And... Uh, things not looking good at all right now for Ginger Beer. Uh, Four thousand gold behind and six kills down. So things might become a little bit different when they actually leave the laning phase because remember they do have a poke comp and they could stretch this game out for days and days and days uh, just poking. Um, the question though is whether the uh, uh, whether Cooler and Funnier are going to be able to get some initiations down, break the pokes, uh, the, the sieges that either they mount or that they have to defend uh, from this, uh, from Ginger Beer. Well, Vega, unfortunately, even though he's got that CS lead, uh, taking a lot of damage and not really able to hold his own against this Oriana. Sadly enough. Down in the bottom lane, farm fest. In the top lane, Rise gets back to lane and uh, soaks up the experience and misses a little bit of CS, but he's so far ahead at this stage um, that I'm sure he's not going to be too worried. He's got his ROA finished, he's got the second component of his Archangel staff and... Smell you can feel. Well... Um, yeah, I mean, he's been stacking. What is, what is his mana? What is his tier on? 378. So he's well on his way to being a, a, a literal monster um, on the fields of justice here. The question is going to be, can this bottom lane um, get far enough ahead to make a difference when the team fighting stage starts? Now, Rewo is just standing still at the moment. Uh, Decurio takes a bit of damage. We might see an ulti coming in. Where's the Fisher coming through from Decurio? Decides not to go for it, even though Daijin popped his ulti. So we had the rat -a -tat, but Glacial Fisher not popped. And not really sure why, because that was an ideal opportunity to actually make use of it. I suppose uh, Dangervert still had both of the disengages available. And that was really... Maybe that was why. What are the disengages that Dangervert has? Uh, he's got the Howling Gale, his Q, and of course Monsoon, Monsoon, which is the ultimate get out of jail free card. Decurio taking some more damage, and in exchange, Rewove eats a little bit of damage from Daijin, but not really too much. Wow, Dangervert taking uh, a bit too much uh, damage himself. And so we've got some pots getting popped on both sides. Jace right now, uh, very, very far behind. 27 CS behind. He's still ta stacking his tier. What is his tier looking like? It's got 428. So slightly more stacked, I think, than, um, than the Rise. Oh, no, exactly the same. Uh, just about. So they're sitting on uh, the same stacks of their tiers. But Rise, in the meantime, has been stacking that ROA for ages, since like 14, four minutes ago, I think it was. So he's steadily growing that much stronger, whereas Jace, unable really to complete an item at this stage. Not even his first main item. Tyson Pike, what is he sitting on? 62 CS2, the 59 of the Shaco. But of course, Shaco has um, three kills and three assists. And now Pink Ward under his belt. So the ping goes down for the second dragon that Cooler and Funnier will be taking of the evening. It's not going to get contested at all. And in fact, I don't think... Well, this bottom lane needs to be real careful because we might have a rotation coming down. In fact, there you go. They're blue pilling. Nobody knows. It's just their sixth sense that is letting them know that they should get out of there. But the gank really wasn't on, as it turns out. Seawood's decided to back off anyway. Decurio has a red sidestone, or a, a ruby sidestone already. So 
has gone for max vision control. And look at that. One, two, three, four, five wards over there. So he's getting help from his team, of course. Five vision, uh, sight wards and a vision ward. In exchange, two vision wards. Three, uh, six sight wards. And what do we have? We've got one, two, three, four sight wards from their opponents, Kulurum, uh, Ginger Beer. So the vision game completely being dominated at the moment by our friends Cooler and Funnier. From Newlands? It is Newlands, right? Yeah, Newlands. Oh, meanwhile, Vega gets caught out in the jungle and gets taken down. So the pink comp, pick comp is working. And that was timed against the blue buff. So, really good move there by Seawoods NZ. He's going to head on down, though. We've got four champions collapsing down onto this bottom lane. Rewove might still get caught. No, he doesn't. Dangerbird uh, pops his monsoon. Rewove flashes to try and get some damage down onto Aaron Straza. Um, not sure that that was the best idea. Um, there comes the flash through from Aaron uh, Straza and the Glacial Fisher knocking up Rewove, looking for a double kill now. So one has already gone to the rise. In fact, he gets a double kill on that double lane. So his first, no, his second trip down to the bottom lane and he nets himself a double kill. And his TP was up. So he's going to be able to TP back to lane and go back to farming. I guess the only disadvantage there is he didn't actually have the opportunity to buy. So he's sitting on 3,000 gold at this stage. <laughs> so he's going to have a massive spike when he actually goes back. Oh, it's not all over. Vega uh, eats another Ignite, gets a stun down, tries to get a stun down, and picks up the shutdown onto the Shaco. Nicely done there by Vega on his Syndra. Now Tyson Pike uh, is doing his blue, but of course he's not safe in the jungle. Twitch comes through. Oh, he flashes away. So he missed his smite, unfortunately. Brom gets the kill um, on the blue. Uh, missed his smite, unfortunately. So uh, Tyson Pike flashes away, gets out of the jungle. I suppose that was why he felt okay about doing it. Al gets away by the skin of his teeth. And Daijin kills another pink ward. So we've had two pink wards actually getting put in there by the Jana. And they've both been killed. So Dangabert perhaps might not do that in the future. We'll see whether that is the case. We're heading to the 21 minute mark, ladies and gentlemen. And the gold lead is now 8,000, almost 9,000 in favor of Cooler and Funnier. And of course, uh, the kill lead, well, no surprises there, 12 to 2. Um, most of those kills... Uh, sitting, oh, let's give you the items again. Most of those kills sitting on the Rise. So Rise has been doing an absolutely sterling job there, really. Uh, for a Rise at 21 minutes to have 7 kills and 1 assist, uh, that is very... He's finished his Archangel Staff. He's still stacking though, um, so that'll stack really, really quickly now. Um, but he will stack the mana on it uh, for a little bit longer, and then he'll have that shield. So you get a, a mana shield, basically from the Archangel staff, staff getting completed. But the fact that, I, I mean, it's 21 minutes uh, that he'll have that all completed. He's having a great game. That pink ward is still there. It's been there all game. Paid for itself. Paid for itself. So let's evaluate the situation. Really, at 22 minutes, we've got three turrets killed. All three turrets killed by the pick comp. The pick comp of Cooler and Funnier. Ginger Beer unable to defend any sort of sieges because they keep getting picked. Is really what the problem is for them. So in terms of the way that the comps are playing out, uh, Cooler and Funnier are able to use the tools that they have set in place for themselves much better than their opponents. Now Seawoods, NZ, is uh, looking to go in on Alf. Oh, we'll get the uh, the turret, but at what cost? Oh, he's taking a huge amount of damage and uh, runs away. Kind of what he should have done was just farm. Try and pick up that cannon. Oh, no, no. no. Finish that <laughs> Finish that off. Not sure what the Oriana was laughing about. Let's head on back and let's uh, follow that Oriana and see exactly what the Oriana was doing. Wow. 
<laughs> oh, unfortunately, <laughs> Dangavut uh, got out of uh, got out of range, and the ball was returned to the Oriana, and the shockwave wasted. Never mind. No biggie. So Sun goes down onto Decurio. He's very, very tanky, but he's isolated completely. Uh, he flashes away. Will he survive? Yes, he just manages to survive by leaping, uh, doing the stand beside Aaron Strider, and uh, gets away with a smidgen of health. And well, we're going to have a barren, uh, a barren troll going down, really. So Decurio is very, very low. But the, even though there's no shockwave, Tyson Pike manages just to survive thanks to the monsoon. Uh, unfortunately, though, the monsoon uh, means that Jana sacrifices, so it sacrifices herself. So Dangovet goes down. Rise picks up uh, an assist, actually. That was there. So Oriana now is sitting on 2 0 oh, and 2, and the chase is on. So that was not a good place to be fighting. Daijin takes some damage from uh, the Lucian. Oh, sorry, let's uh, head on back there. So we've got a little bit of an extension, uh, overextension going on. Remember, Shockwave uh, is still down. And a nice accelerated Shock Blast is all that Algen Jazero needs. Oh, Shock Blast, is just, uh, Shockwave just came up there. So, uh, nice little kill there, picked up by Al. And Aaron Stryza, in fact, is going to go down as well. So the shutdown going onto the Lucian. And that is great that it goes onto the Lucian because Lucian has been doing pretty well, still way ahead of his, um, his opponent. And um, good that the kills go onto him. He's after Seawoods now, uh, not able to take him down, but he'll get a pink ward as consolation. 30 gold, not to be sniffed at. So Rai is unhappy with getting shut down on, as you can see. Okay, let's have a, a look at what is going on in the Twitch chat, because I haven't been paying attention to this. Yeah, Jay Wichall, you, I, yeah, the volley's farming, that's what he's doing. R he, sh he should have gone Feral Flare though, in my opinion, because that would have made the farming worthwhile. That said, he's only on 70 CS in comparison to the 100 CS of his opponent, who's also been ganking. So, uh, things looking very, very strong for C with NZ uh, at the moment, in terms of, you know, the jungle matchup. Nice little world's ward there. So, this is not what they should be... Well, I suppose th there is an... Uh, uh, th th there is a, an objective down here. So, the siege comp, or the poke comp that you have, um, not the siege comp, the poke comp that you have on uh, ginger beer. Th th that is actually the right thing to do, I guess. Get around that uh, um, that objective and poke. But in order for it to be effective, you've got to have really good warding. And three wards is not really good warding. Uh, I suppose, yes, it does protect the flanks, um, but it's the bare minimum. At this stage of the game, they should be afraid of picks. Sorry, we'll head on back. At this... Oh, I hope I didn't break it. There you go. At this stage of the game, you, you should be afraid of picks coming from anywhere. Like, underneath turrets that you are, um, you are seeding. And if you're, if you're set in this sort of area over here, uh, and you're poking a team that's over there, and the team that's over there has got a pink pick comp, you should be afraid that this dark part of the jungle is a pathway for a gang to come in. Yes, you've got this ward over here, and you've got this ward over here kind of shielding your, the, the entrances and, and, and your absolute flanks. But when you're this far behind against the pick comp, you need to be more respectful of what it can do um, and get better vision down. Tyson Pike goes in, gets a toss down onto, uh, onto the Rise, but Rise really, really, very, very strong at this stage. Uh, focuses on the Vega, which is the right thing to do. He knows that Tyson Pike is not, um, is, is not any sort of real danger for him. So just completely ignored him and dropped the Syndra down to halfway. And then walked away with his life, of course. Bit of a push coming through onto the mid lane. I think that was probably a little bit too early. Yeah. 
just a little bit too early. Over the side over here on the flank, Seaward NZ going up against the Jason. Jace really, really strong, but unfortunately, Seaward NZ able to get away um, despite Jace's power there. I mean, that was that was a really good attempt from a Jace who's very, very far behind. Eight deaths at this stage, and um, you know, a real level disadvantage. Two levels. So, we're heading to the 28 minute mark. We've got an 11,000 gold lead. Uh, but still just the three turrets. So things have kind of stalled a little bit for, uh, for Cooler and Funnier. They're still getting the kills. It's 16 and 4, and I think the last time we took stock it was at 12 and 2. Um, it was 12 and 2. So they're still getting kills, but in terms of... And they're getting dragons, but in terms of the building objectives, uh, actually winning the game, um, they are delaying things a long time. And it's really unnecessary. They don't need to delay. They don't need to wait for the rise to get to his place of power, because this rise uh, is 7, 2, and 2. So, uh, and, and almost at 200 CS. So, he is powerful at this stage. And all they're doing right now is letting Ginger Beer back into the game. Uh, the the Jace is just constantly split pushing at this stage, and in fact they they had a little three uh, a, a three one one split push going on uh, f for the time being. Not really a split push because the three in the middle were just defending their turret. But wh what are we doing here? We've got a massive lead, both in terms of gold kill kills and let's face it uh, turrets, and. Um, you're just creating opportunities for this little exchange to go on uh, down in the bottom lane. And fantastic play there. Vega uh, pops down his ulti. Excuse me. Pops down his ulti and takes down the Orianna. And that's a pick ba going back onto the pick comp. Nicely done there. So now it's four versus five. And we are uh, back to status quo. Waiting for something to happen. Waiting for these teams, uh, the team in the lead, Cooler and Funnier, to make a move uh, that wins them this game. Instead, what we've got is this long protracted area where they're letting the poke comp catch up. And that's dangerous. 10,000 the gold lead now. So, where is the vision control? You need to have your flanks, uh, your, your flanks protected. Because that's the only way that Shaka can be effective in a teamfight situation, is if he is able to flank. And the poke is just doing its job. So Twitch now very, very vulnerable at this stage. Having eaten so much poke. Oriana comes back, and I guess they were waiting for the Oriana to come through. They want to get the shock, uh, the shock wave, which is now off cooldown. And they might try and get a siege going here. So you should be anticipating a siege and getting a red ward in there and a red ward in there. At the very, very least. Oh, we've got a catch. Vega gets caught. The monsoon comes through, but unfortunately Syndra turns around. The shockwave picks up that killer. A magnificent shockwave. In fact, I, I think what we want to do is we want to go back to this uh, fight and just have another look at that beautiful, beautiful shockwave at half speed. Here it comes. The ball gets popped in. The shockwave. Oh, it actually only picks up two because they got melted by the rise in advance there. Al arrives with his uh, TP just a little bit too slow. Gets taken down and it's kind of one by one by one getting taken down. A flash comes through from Nick Lick the Poopy and unfortunately not able to create anything out of it. So unfortunately not an ace. But they get a turret go getting taken down. Rewove eats himself a, uh, a, a rune prison, standing under the turret, defending, and there's the delayed ace that goes down as a result. That's two turrets, and you know, I was just going on at them <laughs> about making a move. <laughs> and they absolutely turn it on. Does cooler and funnier, and take down two turrets and an inhibitor, and now they ping the Baron. So the wards get cleared, uh, or the single ward gets cleared, and Seawards is really, really low at this stage, but I think they're going to be able to kill the Baron uh, before 
their opponents well before their opponents get nearby because the poke comp, if it had been there, could have done some serious damage. But unfortunately for them, they uh, took too long to spawn. It's not their fault, you know, it's the death timers. Uh, that took to so long to spawn. Uh, 21 and 5 after that. Heading to, well, we're ticking over the 32 minute mark. Five turrets to one killed. And Cooler and Fania just. They must have been listening to the stream. Nah. Nah, surely not. No, they wouldn't have been, because it was about a minute after I said what I said. And the stream is delayed three minutes. So the gold lead now is uh, re-extended. So there was a brief period of time when the gold lead was slowly getting diminished. And uh, Ginger Beer were, were kind of clawing their way back in. They, I think at its worst it was about 12,000 behind. And they managed to claw back to 10,000 gold behind. But that ace, uh, that, yeah it was an ace. That ace um, and the Baron, now a dragon two turrets and an inhibitor uh, all in very quick succession has meant that the gold lead is now 17,000 very very risky situation good that we've got some wards down here because they'll see the flanking maneuver coming through and get themselves um, well out of dodge Seawoods in Z. Oh, he catches Tyson Pike. He was the ball delivery system there. The shockwave goes down, but Tyson Pike is body bear and survives. The monsoon came down as well. Dagobert is sticking around uh, dangerously, so Tyson Pike is uh, running for his life. Manages to get himself away, uh, but uh, unfortunately, Syndra's gone down. Uh, double kill now to the Shaco. He might actually get a triple kill. There's the triple. Uh, he's well <laughs> uh, in your face as the Shaco. Not actually scared. And just at the end of that, we've got four players dead and just the volleyball alive. Uh, with Well, he's got his ulti going, uh, but he's not going to be able to actually do much there, um, unfortunately, because he's just, what, he's level 12. And it is Murder She Wrote, ladies and gentlemen, at 34 minutes. Cooler and Funnier take the game, move up into 7th position on the ladder, and knock Ginger Beer out of the competition. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a little bit of a longer night than we expected. We started at 7.30 with the community ARAM. Uh, we expected to start this game at 8. It only started at 8.30 due to technical difficulties of this, that, and the other. But in the end, a very good performance by Cooler and Funnier from Newlands College. So they will be playing in the playoffs next week. Uh, look out, Keep an eye on the Facebook page. We'll be making some announcements exactly um, about the coverage that GameStar will be providing of the final series next weekend on the 27th and 28th of September. Thanks for joining us. Uh, oh, we've got to pick an MVP. It's got to go to Seawoods, NZ, I have to say. Uh, you know, just looking at the raw stats, you would say either Aaron Straza or Seawood NZ because of the high kill ratio on both of them. Both of them picking up nine kills, both of them picking up eight um, assists, but Aaron Streiser got put ahead because of the ganks by Seawood NZ. So Seawood NZ can really take credit for both of those. So MVP for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Seawood NZ. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next week on Saturday with the quarterfinals. This is Crisis, signing out.